A few weeks ago, Christian Pulisic and Chelsea punched their ticket into the Champions League final where they'll be facing a pretty strong Manchester City side. Pulisic became the first ever American to score a goal in the semi-final of the Champions League. To most people in the world, it's nothing. But to the football fans in the United States, it's huge. Christian's achievements reflect just how far this nation has come in terms of the beautiful game. Before Christian's goal against Real Madrid, the farthest an American had gotten in the Champions League was Demarcus Beasley when PSV reached the semifinals in 2005. Although Demarcus had a pretty good stint at PSV, especially during that year in the Champions League, he didn't score in the semifinal. For as long as I can remember, there has never been an American footballer who has filled that role of representing an entire nation on a massive global scale like Christian does today. We've We've had players like Landon Donovan, Clint Dempsey, and Tim Howard, but these players aren't necessarily familiar faces outside of their home nation. Christian has broken that barrier for football in the United States and has not only become a star in the States, but also around the world. I've never seen a player grab a whole base of a nation's attention like Pulisic does every time he breathes, <laughs> let alone scores. On top of that, never before had I seen an American footballer be celebrated by the wider footballing community like I have now with Christian. As a kid, alongside wanting to become a YouTuber, I somewhat also wanted to be become the next American footballing star. Whether that was possible or not is for another discussion. But dribbling around players, scoring goals left and right, and winning trophies, it was the dream at one point for me. Watching Christian sometimes have those key impacts in matches, just swaying around defenders like nothing, reminds me of those childhood dreams in a way. My dreams may be dead, but at least I can watch what I wanted to be at one point in my life and just admire it. It's a nostalgic feeling in a way. Unlike me watching Messi and Ronaldo highlights all the time on YouTube years ago, kids in the next generation will have an actual American international role model in Pulisic. It's one thing watching one of the best players in the world, but it's another thing to watch a player from your own nation make history around the world. Identity is such a huge part of why this game thrives around the world. Every time Mo Salah scores, Egyptian social media absolutely explodes. This happened even early into his career when he was playing for Basel or Fiorentina. Tanzania had a whole ass watch party to support Mbwana Samata, who made history as the first Tanzanian born player to make a Premier League start. Or how about Son Heung-min, who every week represents practically an entire continent as by far the best Asian footballer in the world. There's only ever been a handful of Asian sports stars, which is what makes them more special to us Asian sports fans. As a Vietnamese American, Son Hung Min represents a part of me. It's almost every week you see Son making an impact on the pitch, whether it's scoring a goal, or assisting, or just being a key player in general. And the pride of being an Asian within me just gleams like the sun because of it. Now here's the thing, right? As an Arsenal supporter, uh, it's, it's a very conflicting feeling when the best Asian footballer plays for one of your biggest rivals. One of your most hated rivals, actually. And I'll be honest, man, I do root for the guy. Just as long as he isn't scoring against us, then I will celebrate every goal he scores. It's just how it is, I'm sorry. Like, call me a fake Arsenal fan all you want, I don't give a sh man, I really don't. But identity doesn't just have to be a nation, though. I don't know any footballing examples, so just bear with me here as I go into another sport. Take Chase Elliott, for example, a NASCAR driver who is from the small town of Dawsonville, Georgia, which I believe has a population of under 3,000 people. Every single week, this man represents his fan base, and more importantly, also this small town he was from. Every single time he does win a race, there's a pool room in Dawsonville that has a siren, and they turn on that siren. And most recently, he actually won the NASCAR championship, a week later actually went back down to his small town in the race car itself and started doing burnouts around the town in celebration with all the fans that had supported him since the very beginning. In the case of Christian Pulisic, the young footballer represents an entire nation full of avid football supporters. Whether it's the youth who are inspired by him to become footballers themselves, knowing that an American footballer can absolutely become internationally successful. Or those who just watch the sport dreaming of one day having their nation be among the best of the best in the world. When Pulisic first started his senior career at Dortmund in January of 2016, he had plenty of doubters after his first few starts. Even if the starts were against Schalke and Leverkusen, there were high expectations for the young American. But finally, he shut down all those doubts when he scored his first ever senior goal against Hamburg on April 17th, and then a week later, added to his tally against Stuttgart. Fast forward to January of 2019, and Chelsea by the winger, for about 60 million euros. A lot of people 
saw the move as just a way for Chelsea to tap into the American market and gain some extra revenue from the shirt sales. Many believe Pulisic was overrated and wasn't worth the amount Chelsea bought him for. To an extent, I can understand where those people were coming from. Pulisic never saw consistent minutes at Dortmund, but that's due to his injury record, the rigorous competition and depth, and the fact Christian played under four coaches in two and a half seasons. To add on to the pressure though, Eden Hazard left in the summer for Real Madrid, and now everyone was viewing Pulisic as the heir to Hazard's incredible reign at Chelsea. Although it took some time, especially with Frank Lampard, never f***ing playing him, he finally showed what he was capable of. It was everything and more than what people witnessed during his Germany days. Opening your account is one thing, scoring a hat-trick is another. Pulisic became the youngest player for Chelsea to score a hat-trick. He continued this form, scoring in two consecutive matches against Watford and Palace. Then came Project Restart. Pulisic was just back from injury and it honestly didn't even look like it. He was debatably amongst the best players in the league when the Premier League returned after lockdown. And listen Arsenal fans, if it weren't for the fact that Christian got injured in the second half of the FA Cup final, we would not be talking about number 14. That man was a danger to our defense and you all know it. Christian has proved the doubters wrong on multiple occasions. He's continued to show how strong his will is through his perseverance during tough times. He represents not only just the nation, but an attitude we all admire and aspire for going through our everyday lives. He is what the American dream would be if the American dream was actually a real concept and not just something American elitists use to disregard the problems of poverty in our country. Okay, I'll stop. I'm genuinely excited for the next generation who get to grow up and watch Pulisic and other growing American footballing stars. Back 10 years ago, people here in the South where I live would call football, or if we're using the forbidden term, soccer, things like a sport only for girls or sissy ball. And mind you, these were people who unironically watched baseball, but uh, you know, to each their own, right? But now times are different, and there's a lot more acceptance for the sport than ever before. No longer is it looked at as just a beginner sport for children. I never got to experience any sort of passion outside of just watching games on TV and skill comps on YouTube. For the next generation, it's different. They will potentially be able to experience more of a football and culture in the States. Come on, Bobby. Yeah! I'm excited for 2022 when we hopefully we qualify for the World Cup because with the exceptional squad we have now alongside Pulisic, this sport could absolutely blow up and create new generations of footballers and football supporters for the years to come. Christian, in a way, has helped millions of Americans, like myself, connect with the beautiful game much more. Like I said before, identity is very important. Some of my earlier viewers may remember just how much of a fan I was of Christian, whether it be the career modes that I'd buy him in during a FIFA 16 and 17 series, and then later on a 20 series. Or maybe that one time I made a FIFA 17 montage of him when he didn't even have a game face yet. I've had this shirt since October of 2016. It's my second ever football shirt, by the way. And as you can see, it's a little, it's a little damaged because of just how many times I've worn it. I would maybe get another pool six shirt, maybe if the US jerseys actually look appealing. The idea of having a Chelsea shirt even with the name on his back is a very conflicting thought to me. But seeing Pulisic make such a huge impact in a tie against one of the most prestigious clubs in Real Madrid to advance to the final means the world to us fans in the States. I absolutely despise Chelsea, like I said before, but on May 29th, I will be supporting them. And more importantly, I will be supporting Christian Pulisic. Whether Christian does make an impact or not in this final, just know that he's made an entire nation proud. Good luck, Christian.